In this class we're going to look at commercial interpersonal communication. More specifically, word of mouth communication and opinion leadership. So let's start with word of mouth. Now, this is a very informal form of communications. Types of, commun of, of information communicated by this method could include product news, updates, suppliers, prices. So this type of information can easily come across by word of mouth. People telling each other that there is an update to the product or who the supplier is or what the price is. So basic information about the product. Could also be advice relating to price and quality of the product. So the quality of the product may come under scrutiny and people talk to each other and tell their experiences of using the product which could be a form of endorsement or it could indeed go the other way and, and be something quite disastrous by saying that the product is does not meet the needs of the consumer. So word of mouth uh, could be a two-edged sword. It could be supportive or it could be against. Personal experience um, and that's the point. Ex examples of using the product. So this type of information is most easily communicated by word of mouth, by people meeting and talking about it and giving their experiences. Now, customer communication content. Well, complaints about or praise of the product are usually stimulus for com conversation and for communications. Uh, when people meet, it's it's a good topic. It's something which engage their interest and they can talk about some some experience they've had with a certain product. Um, the experience could be very positive or negative and this in, this in itself is a stimulus for communications. The more highly involved consumers are, uh, the more likely they are to complain. So, if it's a product they use on a regular basis and have a bad experience, then they will talk about it more widely. It might be just the surprise factor. They've used it for so, so many years, let's say, and suddenly they've had a bad experience. Um, that is news. That is something which uh, could form the basis of a conversation, the basis for a chat. Complaints have more influence than praise. Generally speaking, when people are criticizing a product, it, it stays in the mind of the listener and they're more easily put off by complaints. Praise on a product is good, but it doesn't mean that, they will, that the listener will go and, and buy the product. But a complaint certainly may have an adverse effect. So marketeers try to stop complainers. Marketeers do their their best to address issues and nip it in the bud. Try to stop the adverse comment before it goes too widely and affects the, the sales uh, significantly. It's also possible that communication may be about new, technically complex, risky or visible products. Um, throughout the latter part of the 20th century, a lot of conversation was really taken up by computers and the advent of computers and, and speculation as to what computers could do in people's everyday lives. And also the adoption of IT technology within business. So that also could be the uh, the basis for communications. Now communication simply may take place because people like to talk. They enjoy talking. <clears throat> and they also like to shift risk by learning from other people's experiences. So in very informal 
chats or conversations. If a consumer has had a, an adverse experience from a product and conveys this, then the listeners may be put off from buying that product. So they want to shift the risk. In other words, they don't want to be the first, perhaps, to buy the product. But if somebody else bought it and liked it, then they may be more inclined to go with that product. The benefits to uh, for a receiver, well, <clears throat> there's a reduced effort. The person who is receiving the information in these communications, they will have reduced effort, reduced search. When we go shopping, we are actually searching for the, the right product at the right price with the right quality. We're looking for a whole string of rightness. And so we're searching, we're engaged in the search activity. But the trouble with search is it's costly. It takes time, it takes effort. We have to visit several shops and it takes time. So when we hear it from someone that they have bought the product in such and such a shop, in a certain shop, and they've had a good experience, it reduces our search. So it reduces the discovery and learning costs. And that's valuable. It also reduces uncertainty. Uh, information from those who know better or who have experience. Nowadays, uh, when people buy online, for example, they may read reviews of the product by previous purchasers. Now, on the assumption that the reviews are unbiased, then valuable information can be picked up from the reviews before a purchase is, is placed. Communication sources, well, who to talk with? Groups specifically interested in the product, they probably form the best sources of information. Um, and the expertise within that group and presumably the objectivity within the group make sources credible. So the best sources of information about a product will be expert groups. And nowadays the best source of that information would probably be online in blogs or in feedbacks or uh, in specialist sites online. Um, we also get it in, in trade magazines and review uh, magazines where products are subjected to tests and benchmarked against other products. It's important that the, the groups are impartial and are honest and open about their experiences with the product. Um, it may be the case that some groups have a grudge to bear against the company for whatever reason and are uh, not giving good comment about the product because they don't like the company. Now that's wrong and it's a misleading portrayal of the qualities of the product. So it's important that the groups are impartial and are open and honest about their experiences. Now opinion leaders, well opinion leaders uh, generally speaking there's an element of authority. Uh, there's information for decision making and the authority comes from um, the comes from, from from the root that these people have had experience in the past and their opinions were proven correct and also they were honest and open about their experiences and what they say could be validated. That gives credibility, it gives authority and that's good information for decision making. Trend setting or trend setters. Well, personal experiences are copied. Um, sometimes trend setters in society can be very influential, uh, not just in the areas of fashion, but in early adoption of techniques. 
could be an industry where companies go across to a certain way of doing things and the rest want to follow because they believe that company knows something they have an insight and it's a good thing to do so it could be personal experiences are copied or it could be business experiences are copied but there is a trend setting pattern that may be uh, important there local opinion leaders well um, personal approval with, uh, within positive reference groups personal approval when it's local if if uh, if the person given the opinion is known widely within the group within the local community is known widely then <coughs> the community that know him or her may wish to follow that person they may wish to uh, agree because the person is known locally for a wide range of activities and is trusted perhaps so why not trust the person with their opinion about a certain product so that could be an area marketers and public policy actors well create interpersonal communication um, could be direct selling techniques selling directly to the consumer uh, to the customer this could be over the telephone or it could be on the street they are creating interpersonal communication could be that the company are going out to meet the customer directly but they could also use of course customer to customer information channels which means if customers are giving feedback about products then uh, they try to influence the customers to to give positive feedbacks if possible so they, they deal with the customer and ask the customer to be honest but at the same time be generous in their praise for the product if it has in fact delivered what they expected So could it stimulate interpersonal communication? Now by stimulating it could be have celebrity endorsements or celebrity spokespeople. Now that may cause people to talk. They may talk about the celebrity. But in so doing they're talking about the product, which is a form of clever marketing. So they are speaking about the person and at the same time they're talking about the product it could also be that they have media and sporting events in which case uh, it gets people talking about a certain um, certain event um, often companies say sponsor tournaments in football or in rugby or in golf or in certain areas, in tennis or whatever. Um, and in talking about the event, the sporting event, it creates a positive image in the mind of the, the customer about the product. They are, <clears throat> to some extent, marrying up the product with the successful event. And that causes them, them to talk. So it is, it's a word of mouth about the event but of course it's also word of mouth about the product because the product is associated with the event okay so that's uh, what we need to do about word of mouth and opinion leaders that's all I want to do on this session so thank you for watching